All right, guys, joining us on the Outsiders podcast, our biggest guest to date, defensive tackle, ex-chief Bill Moss, 1984, defensive rookie of the year. Uh, he was a, a Kansas City Chief from 1984 to 1992. Bill, welcome to the show. I appreciate you being on, man. Hey, thanks for having me on, guys. Oh, sounds good. Well, I'll tell you what, we've been uh, talking to a lot of ex-chiefs this week, talking about the, the days back on, you know, playing on, on Marty's defense, stuff like that. But I want to ask you, we're coming off the Chiefs, 0-2 right now. How do you feel about the first couple games? Obviously, it can't be good. Really disappointed, you know, uh, in, in all aspects. I, You know, I really had some um, lofty expectations this year, and, and I, I follow the team um, very closely um, on, on everything they do. And I, I really thought that even given the state of the quarterback, which is that's, that's an obvious, that's something we should that we have to live with, that we had enough pieces in place in other areas that we would be sufficient, you know. Um, I thought the defense would grow and get better, uh, being in its third year under Romeo Purnell. Um, I'm just really kind of disappointed in, in its first two weeks of, of, of how the team responded, how the players played, the effort, the intensity level. You know, it, it, it's, if you're a Chiefs fan, um, I think we're all in the same boat right now. Uh, what do you think about uh, Romeo Cornell, Brian Dayball being hired? Do you think maybe they're part of the problem as far as the coaching? I mean, uh, we I heard we passed over Marty Schottenheimer. I heard he was interested in the job in the offseason. We passed over Al Saunders for these two. So what do you think about that? You know, it's interesting. I think that, uh, I think that you know, it poses a bigger question in, in you know, exactly uh, who would work under this regime currently um, it seems like you keep on going back to, to New England uh, retreads or somebody that's been in the organization and knows the roots and understandings but uh, we're not duplicating the same uh, outcome here in Kansas City so you know we're, where are you what do you have if, if you're really promoting and I'll say this to the NFL too in a case we with the officials if you're really promoting um uh, quality product and integrity of the game, then you got to scratch your head and wonder what are we actually getting here in Kansas City. And, and it, being that you're an ex-defensive lineman, uh, uh, could you assess, you know, Don Terry Poe's play through the first couple games? Because honestly, I think he's been about the least of our problems. But what do you think, being an ex-defensive lineman? Yeah, I, I think that this kid's going to be a, a good nose tackle. I, I think that. You know, I, I just seen the things he's done, and when he came in as a guy who really wasn't a two gap guy, uh, if you compare him to our other first round draft choices on defense, then he's grasped it so much quicker. I mean, he, he got it in training camp, and and I see him implementing, and I see him actually improving at what he's doing. Now, of course, each and every week's going to pose his different challenges, and he's going to, you know, each and every player is going to be a, a different challenge that he's going to face. But he's going to grow into that. That'll come. I'm really happy with, you know, what he's done to date. I know you people would say, what do you mean? It's a defensive line and no sacks, and <laughs> no tackles for losses, and all these things. But uh, as far as playing that nose tackle position, trust me when I tell you that, that, that he's, he, he's, he's doing it pretty good right now. Um, now, there's going to be a learning curve. Uh, he's going to get beat, and he's going to see some blocks and things that he hasn't seen before, and that's, that's part of learning. But uh, he's an upgrade at what we've had over the last three years there. Uh, also, sticking with the defensive line and kind of Tom Bahali and Justin Houston, do you think we have some guys on this front seven that are out of position, kind of we've transitioned to this 3-4, we've kind of stuck them in spots, and that's not really where they're best fit? Even Tomba, could he be better at defensive end than he is at linebacker, sometimes having to be in coverage? Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, that, I, I think everybody scratched their head on that a little bit. You know, uh, I understand the concept of the 34 as I played it. Um, but when you had a 4-3 in place and, and your linebackers were in place and your ends and, yeah, those things, and then, then you force different things. It's hard. And the people it's hardest on really was, was you know, Tyson and, and Dorsey. Um, you know, I think you could speak to them by themselves uh, alone and they would tell you that, you know, they feel they're playing out position. Now, to, to Dorsey's credit, uh, let me tell you, he's, he's worked his ass off where he really has to try to, concept and play it to, to the best of his ability. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, before we let you go, we got to ask you, as we head to New Orleans this week, 
Uh, the Chiefs have started 0-2 at least for the six out of the last seven seasons. So we're already 0-2 now. We go to New Orleans this week. Is there any chance of, uh, of, of stopping Drew Brees and the Saints and, and maybe getting on the board with a win? Well, there's always a chance. But, you know, for the problems I've seen the first two weeks, I, I think it would be hard to wave a magic wand and have it corrected uh, in, in, in a short week where, you know, with the new CBA, the guys can't put on pads and practice and hit each other and tackle and learn how to run block and learn how to get off run blocks. And, you know, so uh, you, we, it's going to be a tough show, and I, I hope the best, but uh, uh, it's going to be a tough one. I kind of want to go back to the defensive line real quick, ask you specifically about Tyson Jackson. We've heard rumors that he may be cut after the year. I mean, I know his salary goes up, so he'd probably have to restructure it. But um, how do you assess his play? And, I mean, failing on a pick that high is just devastating to an organization, a la Ryan Sims. Yeah, you know, you can go back over the course of probably the last 10 years and look at that uh, defensive tackle position and, and, and look at all the – moves we've kind of just blown there from, from uh, CVE to, to Ryan Sims to we, we traded for Jeff McLaughlin we uh, gave up draft choices for Browning in there uh, even Eddie Freeman Free, Freeman yeah I mean there's a, there's a lot of high draft choices over a long period of time that, that were spent to try to fill that position and it is devastating it's, you know I, I go back to 1983 and say you know it, it, not Drafting the drafting of Todd Blackledge set us back 15 years, and and uh, the, the same could be said for all of the misses we've had at that defensive line position. Uh, you know, until we fill it, it, it keeps on setting us back. From the time we started to try to fill that position, we tagged it with a number one draft pick. It doesn't work out. So then you got to go back and next year and get another high one. It doesn't work out. And, you know that keeps when you're spending high draft choice just to keep on trying to fill this hole. Well, over the course of time, you have other holes to start to pop up, and and you can't get to them because you're still trying to fix that one. So uh, yeah, it's been devastating, and it could very well have a lot to do with the string of uh, six out of seven, o o and two for the season's openers. I kind of want to go back to your playing days, and uh, you played for Marty Schottenheimer. I just wanted to get kind of get your thoughts. I've been asking other players. He's my favorite coach of all time, Marty Schottenheimer, and uh, just kind of if you have some stories or thoughts about him. Yeah, I mean, one that uh, Carl Peterson and I share and Marty Schottenheimer and I share. I I had come off, it was uh, 1988, I came off a, a Pro Bowl, and, and Marty, of course, had, had lost on the drive out in Denver, and and so it's the runner-up of, of the uh, Super Bowl, of the AFC Championship game, the loser of that, and the NFC coaching, uh, NFC uh, division championship game. It's the losing team that coaches the Pro Bowl. So Marty was our coach over there, and um, he had we had uh, you know let go of Frank Gans towards the end of the year, and, I, and it was like Pro Bowl was in the end of January, and I was over there and we we practiced, and you know it was it's Hawaii. You're supposed to have you know a uh, lay around your 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 neck and uh, sitting in the shade sipping a mai tai or something. And, uh, the <laughs> NFC the NFC was in shorts and helmets, and they didn't do anything. And Marty Schottenheimer had us out there in full pads. You know? I'm saying, oh. this is an all-star game. You know? And, yeah. and he, he implemented a game plan with offense and defense, just like he was preparing for a regular season game. That's just how they did it. And uh, all the guys were there, Bill Cowher, Dave Adolph, all those guys. You know? They were just, and, and we won that game. And I came back, and I remember Carl Peterson called me in his office for a meeting. And, uh, wanted to talk to some of the veterans over there. He's, he just got hired. And I came in his office, and I remember telling him, I said, you know, I've been through all the slogans and, and you know, uh, all the hype and all the, the promotional deals. I said, here's the bottom line. If you don't hire Marty Schottenheimer, you're just blowing smoke and you're just another one of those guys. <laughs> oh, great job. And, uh, and you know, he was wanting he want Dick Vermeil at that time, which turned out to be a great coach as well. But, uh, he went out and we ended up with Marty. And I remember, you know, we finally got a Monday night game here. My parents were in town and Carl had him up the suite. He went over and, and, and shared that story with him. Because that, you, you know, you, there's sometimes when you're, you, you just know. And it's not about taking a chance or anything like that. You just know when you cross something that's good. And uh, he was a guy, man. 
We've talked to some former ex-Chiefs uh, recently, Tracy Green, Benny Thompson, Ricky Sigler. A couple of them said they butted heads with Marty Schottenheimer. Uh, do you have more pleasant memories, or did you also have some run-ins with Marty? Oh, no, heck no. Marty and I butted heads left and right. I mean, yeah. it, 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 that's, he was a hey, Western Pennsylvania, University of Pittsburgh grad, hard-head SOB, just like you're the one you're talking to right now. So, yeah, we, <laughs> we were just... We were just going to hit it, you know. Anytime, we, you know, if something came up, it was we had our issues. But I'm going to tell you something. I mean, it's. I think that's a sign of a good coach. And, and I think the one thing that uh, we never got to experience with Marty that all of us wanted to was any kind of a personal relationship. It was always business. You know, you hear all the stories about coaches and the players, quarterbacks afterwards. They go out and call for go have a beer or they you know they stay in touch over the course of time and Marty, well, Marty was just never like that he was just all home business he was very intense and uh, you know it, was, it wasn't until you were done playing that you know you're butting heads because you're an athlete and, and that's and you don't like to be told you don't like to do the things that you don't want to do but he made you do them and that's what made you good because it's a game that is played by people that you know, it's not natural to do those things. And, uh, heck, I, every Friday, we would have, this is Friday now, we play on Sunday. Every Friday, we'd have live, live, flip ads, live, go, go line and short yardage. Wow. I mean, you're beat up. It's a long season. You don't want to, I mean, you're hurting, man. All the way through the season. It's week 15, Friday, live, go line and short yardage. And, uh, we didn't want to do it. We hated it, but we did it. And you know what? When it came to, to, to run defense, we were damn good. Uh, Bill, no doubt about it. You were the man around here for a lot of years. We really enjoyed your work on Fox as well, and we'll try to get into that in another time maybe. But, Bill, I can't appreciate you enough for coming on the show today. Uh, Chiefs head to New Orleans this week, going to try to get us a win. And uh, we'll uh, we'll follow up with you again as the season goes on. And thanks again for being on, my man. Great, guys. Take care. Have a good one. You too.